Kobe White had himself a career night late last night versus the Sacramento Kings. Ayodo Sumo even showed up and balled out. We got to show love to those two players. Show some love to our young guys and talk about the leadership of DeMar DeRozan before we roll up out of here on today's episode. Y'all know we're going to talk about it and break it down. But you know, you got to hear the music first. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Gang. Yeah. Shy Boys Podcast with the Cognac Boys. I'm Cognac Boy Bobby, and I'm holding it down on today's episode of Shy Boys Podcast. If you're tuning in with me today, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell as well. And what was a game that seemed like it was getting out of hand last night versus the Sacramento Kings, your Chicago Bulls, put the gloves on, laced on the boxing shoes, and made it a fight against themselves and the Sacramento Kings to the point to where the Chicago Bulls stormed back down 20-plus and took the victory over the Sacramento Kings. The standout player for last night's game was Kobe White. He set a career high in points with a major bucket going to the basket. Ended the night with 37 points, going 14 of 19 from the field, eight assists, four rebounds, and five of nine from the three-point line. Kobe White was absolutely outstanding last night defensively. And, oh, my God, he was out there doing what he needed to do to make sure that guys wasn't going to be able to take too much advantage of Kobe White on last night's game. Then, on the offensive side, he cooked. Kobe White went and met with Gordon Ramsay. They started up their own Hell's Kitchen, and several players over there on the Sacramento Kings got that work. One player in particular that got hit with the cha-cha slide. He, he was slide to the left, eh, slide to the right, eh, crisscross, and yammed it on Harrison Barnes' head. Probably the play of the season for me. Probably one of that Kobe White's uh, crossover and dunk on Harrison Barnes, along with DeMar DeRozan's spinning pass, you know, for the three that went to Kobe White, I believe. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong on that are probably the two best plays of the season for the Chicago Bulls. Another guy that was getting at work as well was uh Duarte, who he he had his he had his moments during the game, but Kobe White started to get into his head. Kobe White started to get a little bit more physical. Kobe White started to cook that gumbo a little bit better to give you that real Cajun Louisiana feel last night and Duarte who had a good first half, virtually disappeared in the second half. Couldn't really give the uh, Sacramento Kings much after what Kobe White started to do to those guys. And you just got to show a lot of love to Kobe White and what he was able to do. But is he officially out of the slump? I will, I will, ladies and gentlemen, I will say this. Though Kobe White hasn't been that efficient, the numbers have still kind of been there for Kobe White. You know what I'm saying? Kobe White has still been, you know, holding down his part for the Chicago Bulls and being able to do what he needs to be doing to make sure, you know what I mean, that the Bulls were able to get it done. Now, there were some games that where Kobe White left a lot to be desired when whatever said game, but he was still out there giving the Chicago Bulls what he was able to do with the adjustments coming from the opposing teams. Kobe White was still able to, you know, make sure he gets close and stays within range of what he's averaging this season. Yeah, he had a couple, you know, subpar games like the Detroit game that was on February 27th. He only had 10 points against the Cavs. He only had 14. Wasn't really efficient in those games. But nonetheless, he was still effective in some ways if you actually watch the game and look at him his impact with him being able to space the floor him being able to 
uh, create and play make for others and him being able to go out there and occasionally hit a three or occasionally go out and get a driving bucket, you know, in crucial moments. Was it everything that we seen maybe in January? Probably not. January, December? Probably not. But Kobe White was still making his presence felt. But I will say when it comes to the slump, this is just kind of like the highs and lows of the NBA season. But I cannot wait to watch Kobe White versus the Utah Jazz that's coming up, versus the Golden State Warriors who are coming up, and versus the Los Angeles Clippers who are coming up very, very soon for the Chicago Bulls. Those teams right there, they are they are all within the good, tough Western Conference. The Golden State Warriors fighting for their playoff lives. The Clippers are fighting for playoff positioning. I can't wait to see what Kobe White is able to do against those teams and if he's able to put out a scoring output, maybe not 37 points against those teams, but something similar, something that is very, very impactful, maybe a 25-point game, 27, 28 points per game, you know, within those matchups that are coming up that are crucial for the Chicago Bulls if they want to continue to make that push to the play-in and just – you know, be able to continuously grow as young players. I can't wait to see that from Kobe White. So if you ask me if Kobe White is out the slump, I would say one game doesn't change everything. I need a little bit more of a sample size, you know, to say that he's out. But we do know Kobe White is still going to be productive at the end of the day. So I'll leave it at that. Now, I want to transition on to making sure that we show love to some young fellas. Some young fellas on the Chicago Bulls. Ayo Dosumu. Something is wrong with these teams that uh, match up against the Chicago Bulls. And every single game, Ayo Dosumu was killing it in transition. Ayo Dosumu in the half-court offense is getting downhill. Last night, Ayo Dosumu ended the game with 20 points, went 9 of 15 from the field and 2 for 5 from the 3 while giving the Bulls 5 assists, 2 rebounds, 1 steal. and. He hit some very, very impactful uh, shots, some very, very meaningful shots later in that game to help the Chicago Bulls push forward. And we seen Ayodo Sumu rise to the occasion for some strange reason. It just seems like for me at certain moments during certain games, Ayodo Sumu seems to be so mature and so uh well thought out with this approach during certain games and certain moments. It's I'm still I'm I'm still a believer that he has to do it more consistently, you know. But just about every single game, you can say Ayo Dosumu is making his presence felt. You can't knock him for that. So I got to show a lot of love to Ayo Dosumu in that regard, who played about 40 minutes last night. Then another guy on the on the list, I got to show some love to Julian Phillips. Julian Phillips, two for four from the field. He didn't hit a three, but he gave the Chicago Bulls six points in 14 meaningful minutes, adding on to those minutes in the fourth quarter, along with Ayodo Sumu to wreak havoc on the Sacramento Kings and turn up the defense. One thing that I'm really, really liking about these young players that are coming and, you know, playing some minutes for the Chicago Bulls these last few weeks is that they are showing effort on both sides of the court. On both sides of the court, Julian Phillips, Orla Bettine has done his thing. Daylon Terry had, didn't play last night, but when he's in the game, he's doing certain things to it. He'd be like, all right, okay, cool. I feel you, Daylon Terry. And Billy Donovan, for the sake of all of us, please stop giving Javon Carter minutes. I understand your boys play, paid him, but screw that. We'd rather see Daylon Terry come out there and play, make, defend, and have some hype plays than to see a guy pump fake 40 times in one game with only playing 11 minutes. Come on, guys. We need something better than that. But back on to the young players. And I think the biggest thing with these young guys, your Orlop Bitsums, your Julian Phillips, Daylon Terry, Kobe White, Ayodo Sumo, you love to see the growth. And these players are very, very versatile when it comes to their size, their length, the things that they're able to do offensively and defensively, some better than others. But you you are happy to see that these guys are versatile and that, and that as long as they continue to progress in the right way, these guys can be used in many, many different ways. So shout out to my young bulls for sure. Now, before we go, I want to show some love to DeMar DeRozan. DeMar DeRozan has been leading the way since he's got in Chicago. And we have to acknowledge that at some point, 
We could talk about, you know, the things that get on our nerves with DeMar DeRozan, and they are rightfully so. There are moments to where DeMar DeRozan frustrates us with trying to slow down the pace and, you know, not keep up the pace. Or, you know, when DeMar DeRozan is not in a facilitating mode and he has to go out there and get those buckets, sometimes it's understandable, but sometimes it ticks people off, including myself. I can be honest about that. But you cannot deny since DeMar DeRozan has walked through that door and became a Chicago Bull, he has been the lead dog for the Chicago Bulls, taking these young guys under his wing, being able to be that scorer that we know he can be, and being a guy to drive the Chicago Bulls or even give them a chance. DeMar DeRozan has, look, I know some people going to, Go, you know, get at me in the comments and say, yeah, but we're, medi we know we're mediocre. We can't be celebrating that. I understand that to a degree. But without DeMar DeRozan, are we even sniffing the play in? We got to ask that question. I understand, you know, if Zach Levine was healthy and stuff like that, but he has not been healthy. Nikola Vucevic has been, you know, pretty consistent as well, but he hasn't been DeMar DeRozan. These two guys that we call the big three and some people now refer to as the mid three, the guy that stands out the most has been DeMar DeRozan with his consistent play, with his durability, with his leadership to take the young guys under his wing, help them become better pros, help them become better basketball players, let them know what it means to put in the work and then see all your work during the offseason now start to translate on the court. You got to show DeMar DeRozan a lot of love in that regard, no matter how we feel about him and his future with the Chicago Bulls. DeMar DeRozan, along with all the other guys that's currently playing on his team, is giving us something to cheer for. You know what I'm saying? They're giving us something to cheer for. And, hey, I'm all for it. I'd rather watch the Bulls, you know, in this regard and see that the future is brighter than to tear it all down and start at ground zero because I believe that the Chicago Bulls have nice foundational pieces that they can depend on and as what I called a phase-out period. What I mean by that is you have your Kobe White, Ayodo Sumu, Julian Phillips, Orlop Bettine, and Dalen Terry. That's your five foundational pieces in my mind. Will some people go? Maybe. Will some people rise? Of course. But you allow these young guys to learn how to be professionals from your Alice Caruso's, from your DeMar DeRozan's, from your Nikola Vucevic's, from your Andre Drummond's. You let these guys learn how to be a pro, learn how to be NBA players, learn how to uh, establish a solid work ethic year after year. And when contracts come up, like DeMar DeRozan's contract is coming up, when age starts to become a factor, like Nikola Vucevic's age is starting to become a factor, you can slowly transition those guys out of the way, and now you already have those players that's been performing. Now you potentially give them more opportunity, and you never know what the result will be. That's what I call the phase-out period. Y'all let me know if y'all agree or disagree with that. But, hey, that's it for me today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to another episode of Shy Bulls Podcast. I'm Bobby. I'm going to catch y'all on the next one, for sure. Cognac. Gang.